In today's video, we will learn what SPIFS is and how to use it properly and it's coming up right after the intro. Hello world, my name is Asali, meaning basic in the language Hasa. Today we'll be getting started with SPIFS in the ESP32. SPIFS meaning SPI Flash File System and SPI means Serial Peripheral Interface in case you didn't know. What SPIFS allows you to do is access the flash memory of the ESP32 like you would do in a normal file system in your computer but simpler and more limited. And this happens using SPI. This means that you can read, write, close and delete files in your flash memory of the ESP32. SPIFS is especially useful for a few certain things like creating configuration files with settings using JSON for example, saving data permanently, uh, saving HTML and CSS files to build a web server, saving images, figures and icons and much more. This way, whenever your project needs some certain data or settings that your ESP32 can't forget when it accidentally shuts off, the last saved data or settings will still be safe in the flash memory. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use SPIFS to access the flash memory using Arduino code, meaning you will be able to create files with settings and saved data permanently. In the next video, I will be showing you how to save HTML and CSS files to build a web server, which can be extremely useful as well. Link to that video will be in the upper right corner on screen now. Now that we have learned a little bit more about SPIFS, let's put it to use. Let's open Arduino and include SPIFS.h like so. In case you can't include SPIFS, you have to download the needed libraries. You can follow my introduction video in the upper right corner on screen now. Now let's move on to our setup and give it our serial begin. Now before we can start using SPIFS, we always have to include the next lines. You don't have to use an if statement here, but you can with a serial print inside it just in case things go wrong and you want to get notified. Next, we'll have to open up an existing file or create one. We can do this with the next line. Now add in this if statement to check whether opening the file went wrong or not. Now that we are certain the file has opened, we have to print a line into our txt file. We do this like so. And again, like you can see, I have added an if statement around the file print to make sure whether it succeeded or not. Like I said, you don't actually need all these if statements. Just these lines of code would be enough. After we added the sentence to the file, we can simply close the file like so. Now that we added the line, let's read it out in our void loop. To open the file, type in this. Now that the file has been opened, let's read out the file. However, we have to insert this into a while loop to make sure it reads out every line like so. After this is done, we will close the file back and add in a delay of a second. Now we can try to run our program and open up our serial monitor. And as you can see, we have written a file that contains subscribe to my channel. Real smooth there. Let's now delete this part of our code. Meaning the code now will only read out the file and not write anything into the file anymore. Let's re-upload it to the ESP32 and after the code has been uploaded, let's even disconnect the ESP32 from the computer to make sure the power went off, meaning the code now will only read out the file and not write anything into the file anymore. Let's re-upload it to the ESP32 and after the code has been uploaded, let's even disconnect the ESP32 from the, from the computer to make sure the power went off and let's plug it back in and open up our serial monitor and as you can see this confirms the ESP32 continues to read out the saved text file meaning the file has been saved to the flash memory. Now sometimes we do want to delete our file so let's do that now. We can delete the code inside our void loop as well like so. Now back to our setup because we will only delete the file once and add in this line to get into our root and open the next file. Next, we have to go inside a while loop again. This is because you may have created multiple files. Now we want to print out the name of the file and open up the next file for the while loop to repeat the process. 
This way, we will be able to read out all files at once. Now, since I know I already created only one file, called subscribe.txt, I will be adding this line to remove it. Now let's run again and open up the serial monitor, and as you can see, the only file that is printed out is the subscribe.txt file. Now we delete the remove part from our code. And run it again, and as you can see, this time there is no file to read out, meaning the file has been deleted. Please consider checking out my Patreon page as well, that would be awesome. There I upload all of my code with in-depth explanation of each video I ever created on this channel. Link for that down below or on screen now. So that's it for today guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss out on the next video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye world.